Welcome back to our YouTube channel, everybody. There was some major news in the market last week. Jerome Powell, chairman of the Federal Reserve, dropped the hammer on some of the largest banks in the country. In this video today, we're gonna break down the news to you and discuss how that may impact your dividend income. Smash that subscribe button, give us a thumbs up. The Dividend Diplomats are here to talk to you about the big news that Jerome Powell just dropped on us um, related to the big banks that are out there, specifically the top 33 banks, the impact, what we can do as investors, and what Bert and I, what we have thoughts on. Yep, yeah. perfect. Thank you, Lanny. So first, let's start with the news. At the end of June every year, the Federal Reserve releases the results of the annual stress test. Take a step back. All the largest banks are required to submit an annual stress test to the Federal Reserve. The stress test runs the bank's balance sheet, their loan portfolio, everything through various economic situations. Some good scenarios, some bad scenarios. As a part of the submitted stress test, you, you, the bank will propose a proposed dividend and a proposed share buyback plan. The Federal Reserve will review all of this information. They'll either accept or reject the plan submitted by the banks. Yeah, and essentially what they're trying to look at is just their capital ratios. Yeah. And, you know, the Fed had defined what the minimum, you know, the medium level and what it is and what it will take to be a well-capitalized bank, um, you know, in this day and age. So that's really what they're looking at to yeah. see how deep and how dark can these banks sustain poor economic times. And they'll also shock it up if things actually improve and how quick that they can actually have better results. Yeah, no, perfect. So I guess that would be the question, Lanny, is what happened this time that had been different than some of the other plans in the years past? No, of course. I mean, I think first what the Fed had just imposed on the top 33 banks, including JP Morgan and Wells Fargo, is to suspend their you know stock or share buyback plans, which most of them already suspended it because come on, how great would that be for during this time period for these large institutions to buy back their shares during March and April when their stock was depressed at a low level where you know people are scrambling for money but yet these large banks are acquiring their own shares. Yeah, I mean, exactly. And that's a, it would be a huge use of cash, especially at some of these prices that these bank, these banks were trading at during those times. Right. And, and, you know, share buybacks is a way to keep the stock price up as they reduce the shares outstanding. Mm -hmm. So that's number one. Yeah. They, you know, kind of limited and or suspended the buybacks for these largest uh, banks. Yeah. So what is the second item. The second item on the list, banks were required to freeze their dividends at the current level. So a lot of times at the end of June and July last year, banks increased their dividends significantly because they had all of the required capital to do so and pass these stress tests. This year, with things slightly changing, the Federal Reserve said, said no, no dividend increases. You keep them at the current levels. Yeah, Jerome pretty much put the kibosh yeah. um, and actually hit the red button you know, mm -hmm. for once on, on something during this time period, yeah. as you know that they've been printing money as we were talking about during <laughs> our Cash is Dead uh, video that we put out. So, and really take a step back yep. for this number two item. They really only did this for the third quarter. Yes. They're not saying this is a permanent, you know, change or, you know, limit on the on the banks, but really it's just to limit the increases in the third quarter. Yeah. yeah, I think it's a great point to highlight. And also with that, doesn't mean you're cutting your dividend. It doesn't mean your dividends are going away. Dividend dividends are going to be calculated based off of a formula using the trailing 12 months earnings, and that will be continually monitored to determine if you can continue to pay out your current dividend level. So again, Dividends aren't going away. You just can't increase them during this time. And then what's the third piece, Lanny? Now, the third piece is a little bit interesting. Um, so these top 33 largest banks actually now need to submit a plan to good old Jerome and his posse on what their new capital plans look like, um, you know, on a frequent basis to see, you know, under certain stress scenarios, how long can they, you know, I guess withstand um, and how much capital will they need to survive during an other yep. unforeseen downturn? Yep. No, perfect. So again, three major implications of the Fed's announcements over the last week. And now we're just going to talk about some of our takeaways here and how this is going to impact 
impact you and your dividend income going forward. Well, what are your thoughts, Bert? Yeah, my thoughts are before running to the hills, this is not screaming that we are in a global financial crisis yet. This is a piece to help preserve capital and prevent bank and keep banks balance sheet strong during this. Because if you recall during the last financial crisis, one of the things that helped trigger some of the downfall and the crash was that banks were in a much worse capital position. So as earning losses mounted, as loans performed poorly, their capital went down and people started running for the hills. This is not the case. Banks are still approved to pay dividends. They're just not allowed to continue, continue pouring out money into the system. They're there to preserve their balance sheet with this. Right. Now, you know, my take, Bert, mm -hmm. is, you know, I'm not, I'm not really afraid or, you know, I'm yeah. not sure what the fully impact will be to like a forward dividend income stream. Yeah. But if you have a diversified portfolio, you shouldn't really notice that significant of an impact. Yeah. Um, you know, some of the you know, companies or banks that are the top 33, one thing to always keep in mind is the dividend payout ratio. Yeah. So again, Bert and I always talk and preach about that 40 to 60% range that we like to see. Definitely click the link above us here to go read about how critical the dividend payout ratio is. So again, if, if these banks had a lower dividend payout ratio, more than likely nothing really should change from yeah. the dividend payment that they'll be making in that third quarter um, and ongoing. So yeah, that's that's really one of my big takeaways to, to provide to you, the, the viewers. Yeah. And again, I think Lanny, for the impact this has on your dividend income, Lanny just covered that perfectly in his area. So again, if you own bank stocks and you want to see, are you potentially impacted by this? Look at their earnings over the last 12 months. Look at their current dividend payout ratio and see and see where you stand. And chances are, if your bank's impacted, there's probably an article or two written about it. So feel free to research on your own. But again, just check your portfolio to see if your dividend income is impacted. You know, and the other thing when you really think about it, when they stated the last and trailing 12 months, mm -hmm. you know, really that goes into, you know, end of Q2 2020 or June 30th. So we're talking July 1 of 19 through June 30th of 2020 and bank earnings were actually fairly solid at least for nine months of that. So from July 1 of 19 to 331 of 20. So really the trailing 12 month earnings shouldn't look that bad um, considering the banks performed very well in 19 and the pandemic and or the coronavirus really didn't start until the end of Q1 of 2020. Mm -hmm. So keep that in mind that those trailing 12 month earnings probably don't look as bad as what the Fed had made them look to be. Yep. Yeah, no, again, fantastic point, Lanny. Now, Bert, the big question that they're probably mm -hmm. wondering is, is what are you doing though as a dividend investor? me. I'm going to continue looking for high quality, undervalued dividend growth stocks, banks, other institutions as well. I'm going to stick to my fundamentals and just continue performing high level, strong fundamental analysis for these companies. Yeah. And what about you, Lanny? No, I appreciate the ask, Bert. You know, obviously I'm going to run them through the dividend diplomat stock screener yep. and see kind of what undervalued dividend stocks do come from that. You know, during this time period, you know, not going to exclude the, the the top banks, but obviously I always keep my eye on the prize, <laughs> and I look at the top five foundation stocks for your, your portfolio. So it's always a good time to see. Okay, if you don't want to add capital to the banking industry, look at these um, top five stocks that we always recommend for your portfolio. So that's always in the light. Yep, perfect. Thank you, Lanny. So again, if you have any questions for us feel free to add them in the comment section and we'll respond back as quickly as possible. You know, and again, Jerome Powell finally turned off the printing press and released some other form of news. You know, this is Bert and Lanny from the Dividend Diplomats mm -hmm. bringing you information and we're signing out. Over, Over and, and out. out.